with new footage from Jimmy Uso's DUI arrest surfacing. This is Wrestling Hub, my name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for April 27th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official, and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. On Raw, Asuka made her long a way to return to confront Becky Lynch. Bully Ray took issue with this segment on Busted Open Radio saying, After last night, I do not want to see what happens with Becky and Asuka next week. You didn't grab me. You did not manage to catch my attention. You were not able to do anything. I don't know what else to say, like honestly, I don't know what else to say. From the beginning to end, other than how great the women looked, and it was great to see Asuka back as a fan, I was simply not into it. Talking about this segment as well, Vince Russo noted on Legion of Raw that Becky Lynch comes off as if she's cosplaying. I figured out something tonight too when I was looking at Asuka in the ring with Becky Lynch. I figured out something and now Seth Rollins. I know I'm an old guy. I'm 61 years old, okay? But Chris, I do know what cosplay is. And that's what they're doing. Becky Lynch is cosplaying. It has nothing to do with the character. A Rhea Ripley is their cosplaying. You would go to a convention cosplaying. The way they look and their appearance have nothing to do with their character. It's all cosplay. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out. While they would become stars as the Iconics in WWE, Cassie Lee and Jessica McKay would end up released from the company and decided to head to Impact Wrestling, where they became tag team champions. Today, Cassie announced that the duo will be taking a break from in-ring action, writing, Former Impact Wrestling Knockouts World Tag Team Champions The Inspiration, Cassie Lee and Jessica McKay confirmed today that they will be indefinitely stepping away from in-ring action. The Inspiration have been a great part of Impact's Knockouts roster and wonderful to work with, said Impact Executive Vice President Scott Demore. Cassie and Jesse are incredibly talented performers. Everyone at Impact wishes them every success in the future. The Inspiration issued a joint statement. We first want to thank Scott Demore and the entire Impact family. We've had such an amazing experience working with the incredible Impact staff and roster. We will cherish these Impact memories forever. We are excited to start a new chapter in our lives and explore other opportunities that may come our way. Despite recently coming face to face with CM Punk, AEW Champion Hangman Page will have to put this new feud on hold, as he recently took to Twitter to announce that Dynamite is tonight at 8pm on TBS, but I will not be on there, because my face is full of COVID snot, sorry, please enjoy it regardless. Still on tonight's Dynamite, we'll see Akaru Shida vs Serena Deeb in a Philly Street fight, Adam Cole, The Young Bucks, and Red Dragon vs Dante Martin, The Varsity Bonds, Lee Johnson, and Brock Anderson in a 10 man tag team match, Lance Archer vs Wardlow, Dax Harwood vs Cash Wheeler in an Owen Hart tournament qualifying match, and Sammy Guevara vs Scorpio Sky in a ladder match for the TNT title. FTW champion Ricky Starks has made his name in AEW as one of the top future prospects. Given his abilities on the mic, it's no surprise to see Starks on commentary for the company. Talking about this with Rassel Rap, Ricky revealed that promo skills don't exactly translate to the commentary booth. There is a misconception that just because you are charismatic and can cut a promo that you can also do commentary. They're not one and the same at all. There's a lot of ebbs and flows, and a lot of stuff to commentary that people don't even think about. So when you're out there and it's a show that is live, and we have to move from one thing to another and you can't say something, it's worrisome. The funny thing was, my first few times, they would say a joke to me and for me to get a response and I would wait a minute or two. By that point, we've already moved on, so I can't even make a retort to that. So I found that out the hard way and not be so long-winded. It's good working with Excalibur and Taz and Jericho, all these people, they help me out. And I think they understand that I'm trying the best I can.
It's being about her in-ring debut at WrestleMania 34 alongside Kurt Angle, Ronda Rousey said on the Wives of Wrestling podcast that Angle influenced her long before they met. Kurt was an influence on me before I even met him as an aspiring Olympian. I wanted to be an Olympic gold medalist, the first American to win an Olympic gold medal in judo. I mean, Kurt was that hero that I had of, oh, one day you could have people look up to you and talk about you with that kind of reverence that people talk about Kurt with wrestling. In wrestling, people are all like, oh, Kurt Angle, you know? So I wanted to be the Kurt Angle of judo. Then when I came into WWE and they partnered us up, it was like he's the only person who has been in a similar situation like that, coming from the outside from other successes, starting your rookie year under a microscope and that spotlight. Having him to guide me in the beginning and not like roll his eyes at me and all the kind of stuff that I would say or do or whatever. It's just my inexperience and stuff like that. He was an awesome guide and a teacher. I just kind of felt like I was in good hands and that anything I aspire to is possible because Kurt has already done it and if Kurt could do it, I could do it kind of thing. He's not an alien. I could do it because he did and maybe I could do more. On his podcast, former WWE writer Freddie Prince Jr. recalled a time he was asked to bring someone from developmental for The Undertaker to be while building a feud with Edge. A star was chosen, and the idea was for him to claim to be The Undertaker's son, until Triple H decided against this. So we're in the production meeting and everyone's putting their segments through. Here comes our segment, and nobody said boo the last two weeks or even three weeks of TV that we got out of it. Not one agent, not Kevin Dunn, not Vince, not anybody. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Hunter says, are we seriously going with this guy? Remember, this this is not a pay-per-view match. This is not a guy that would get any sort of offense on The Undertaker. It would be just to build it for The Undertaker to have something to do so we could smash this guy and then get rolling over to Edge. He says, are we really going to go with this guy? Vince goes, what do you mean? What's the problem? He says, he looks like he cuts my grass, man. And Vince laughed. Literally all the air went out of the room. Like, you could just feel it because now it's embarrassing to the company. Well, at least from my perspective. You put something on TV for three weeks and then you remove it with no explanation. There's no way you can do that. Like, that doesn't happen on any show. You could replace someone like on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air back in the day. Vince laughs, and then Hunter laughs, and then Kevin Dunn laughs. I mean, he sells for it. You would have thought it was the best joke ever. So, I'm like, oh man, this is dead. We're dead, and Vince goes, alright, dump it. Speaking on Thunder Rosa's taco vlog, Dustin Rhodes mentioned that he wants AEW's women's division to be built like WWE's. You girls, there are a lot of people that do reach out to me here and want help and knowledge, but from day one, it started with Britt and B Priestley. They had a hell of a match. We started hiring more girls. I was diving in with them, and I started having training sessions just because I wanted to. I wanted the women's division to get somewhere other than where it was at. WWE has done a great job at that, but I want to see AEW do that. It's not because I don't like the guys. I truly see the desire in you ladies and how you want to make it to the next step. That means a lot to me because I like the challenge to get you guys there in any possible way. I want to lead you there because I care. A lot of people may think that's weird, but I truly do. I found a calling and I love to train with you girls, talk to you, mentor you, listen to your problems, hug you if you're crying. It means a lot to me. Some more than others, like you. You're all working hard and you all deserve a chance. That's important for women today. We're always talking equality. I think it's important. Now we have a match on Dynamite a rampage every single week, slowly but surely. There have been lots of main events. There have been steps forward. I appreciate that as a fan of women's wrestling. I can sit and watch men wrestle all day long, but if it's a women's match, I want to see what they do, pick it apart, and fix it if it's fixable. I'm very protective of the group. Even when we were practicing during the pandemic, someone yelled at, and it was, I can't believe they did that to you. I was so mad. I'm like, it's okay, it's fine. Y'all were taking up for me, and that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. In July of last year, Jimmy Uso would be pulled over by Pensacola police for allegedly speeding and running a red light. The officer smelled alcohol, which led to the initiation of a field sobriety test. When the officer claimed that he hoped Uso passed it this time, Jimmy started to get irritated. Can you look at the, can you look at the you, you, you the asshole. I'm, I'm trying. You're the one that's worse. Okay. You, you, had, you, you had a remark. You, you made a remark you shouldn't have did. Oh, okay. Uso would continue to get angry during the test, which he would ultimately fail. Following his arrest, Uso would plead no contest as the deal was cut with prosecutors last month to settle the case.
Last summer, it was reported that former ROH world champion Michael Elgin had been arrested after his ex-fiancee came out with abuse allegations. Having a protective order filed against him, the arrest was said to have occurred due to him violating the terms. Now, Elgin is denying that he was ever placed under arrest, providing a document to WrestlingNews.co, which shows his ex-fiancee did not show up to court and that the restraining order had been rescinded. With no evidence of his arrest on the St. Clair County website from the supposed date of June 30th, Elgin would also note that he would not have been able to get a Japanese work visa if he had been arrested or had a criminal record. When it comes to the creative for Monday Night Raw, Ringside News would report that a lot of fans have asked if they changed up writers on Raw after this week. It did feel a bit fresher. We were told that nothing was different this week. Vince wanted different than what was pitched until he heard something he liked. It helped a lot this week. Talking about the possibility of Randy Orton breaking the record of 16 world championships held by Ric Flair and John Cena, Bully Ray said on Busted Open Radio that Cena's accomplishments mean more. John Cena has the highest number of WWE World Heavyweight Championships. Since it is the same number, Cena is at 16 WWE World Heavyweight Championships, and Ric Flair is at 16 total World Heavyweight Championships, WWE and other companies included. Cena's record holds more water to me, and that's who we should be talking about when it comes to Randy Orton beating a record. If you want to see more videos, check out Wrestling Zone, where we do biographies, lists, and more. So far, we've done videos on the Usos' younger brother, Solo Sokoa, Veer, and more. If you want to check these out and others, click the link in the description. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.